All right, today we're going to go in-depth on a vulnerability scanning of my local network. I started it last time and showed you a little bit about the scanning. And today we're going to dive a little bit deeper into it, look at the different scan modes. Let's make sure that our feeds are updated again. And I showed this in another video. These are 10 days old. I'm going to update these real quick. Check out that video if you want to know how to do this successfully. We got our feeds all updated. So let's go over to this scan section. I'll show you what we have. You can start a new task here. And I showed this in the last video. Here's your task wizard. That's if you wanted to just scan a single IP or a network range. You could do a 0 slash 24. If you go to advanced task wizard, you could actually set it up to start at a specific time. Keep in mind this is UTC time. You'll have to look, Google what that time is compared to your local time. Here's your hosts. Again, you can do a single IP or a network. You name the task here. So let's just say we wanted to do a local test. Now here's your different types of scans. I'm going to just do a full and fast again. I'm going to show you what all these mean here in a second. I'm going to just start this immediately. So as I'm showing you the other features, it's scanning. You could add SSH credentials here. So again, it was my local was 0 slash 24 if I want to do the whole network. You can also do a, I think, 1 through, this will do 192.168.0.1 through the 200 range. You can also do commas in between, and then I could add more. I'm just going to do the 0 slash 24. I'm going to get this fired off so I can show you some other stuff while this is running. So that should be everything on the 192.168.0 network. If I wanted to add SSH credentials, I could do that here. And I could set up a way to email it. I'm not going to do any of this right now. I'm going to start this immediately, and I'm going to show you how to set up these credential things here too. And create the scan. It should launch off here. Now, if you want to customize this even more, what you can do is go to configuration and targets. You can set up your targets here. These are the ones that I did the other day when I was demoing this, but you could create a new target list. I'll show you this example. We'll call this YouTube demo. You could upload a file. That could be a TXT file with hosts in it. You can manually say what you want. You could then, if you want to do this whole range, and then you could exclude a host like say I want to scan everything but during this engagement we have a sensitive server at 192.168.201 if I'm doing an engagement for somebody and they say just do not hit the server I could do that this I leave by default at this you could test these other ones if you're having issues getting scans back now this alive test this is the scan configure default which I think is a ping I typically leave this at scan configuration default Unless I'm having an issue getting results back, then I'll probably do an Nmap scan of a network and then consider everything alive that I found out was alive during that Nmap scan. Sometimes they won't reply to ping, and if the scan default is a ping, you might not get a result back that the host is alive and it might not scan it. So if you consider alive, it's going to try to find vulnerabilities on that system, whether it's there or not. The problem with always considering alive is that it can be time consuming because it's, it's going to try all the different vulnerabilities on a host that might not even exist so you're just wasting time there i typically leave this like i said at scan configuration default if i scan a network and i'm not getting results back i'll usually do an nmap scan and then enter the hosts in manually that it returns with that i know are there and then i'll always consider it live and I'll show that in another video. Here's where you add your credentials. Say I know that there's an SMB server on here. I could add SMB credentials here in the form of a username and password. I might name this. So let's just say they gave me some credentials to use. And it was test Bob and admin password. Now this insecure use means that it will also try to use this username and password even in clear text. So you probably don't want to do this in an engagement. If you did this, allow insecure use, and it finds, like I showed you in that first scan that I did a couple weeks ago, it found an insecure login to my router. It would allow login over HTTP. That would be passing these credentials. If I have this as yes, 
to allow in secure use, it would pass those credentials in clear text. Now for security purposes, I'm going to say no. I don't want clear text passwords from the scanner going across the network where somebody could sniff them. There might be situations where you want to do this, allow in secure, and then just change this username and password afterwards in case somebody sniffed that traffic. But if you say no, it will not allow that insecure password to go across the line. So let's just say we save that. Now if we had SSH credentials, say we create one and you could do username and an SSH key. Let's just say username and password to keep this simple. And we have a password in here. Okay, so let's say we save this. So we talk to the network people or we compromise some SSH credentials already. We could pass them into this. This is going to log into the server. It's going to log in via SSH and it'll be able to get more information more information about the vulnerabilities it might be able to give you better results as far as false positives because it can actually check version numbers of software configuration files stuff that the vulnerability scanner might not be able to detect if it does not have credentials in the system what's good practice is to do a scan without credentials and a scan with credentials then you have an overall idea of what an attacker would be able to get without credentials and what potential vulnerabilities and attacks they could perform if they did have credentials or they compromised another box and did pivoting or patch the hash. So the rest of this I'm leaving as default, but that gives you an idea of how you can add your hosts here, host file. Now this is my target. Keep in mind I'm creating a target here. This is the SSH password and SMB password and username that I want to try on this network. So let's just save. So now I have a new target called YouTube Demo, and this is the host that it includes. Let's just say we do 1 through 200 for demo purposes. We save that. This shows you you have 200 IPs you're going to be scanning, right? This is 254. This is 200. You have 1 through 200. Those are the hosts that you're scanning in this target. Credentials, we kind of set them up when we were setting up that target. We created some credentials, but here's credentials that you can now use anywhere, right? We put those in here. You could add more credentials here if you wanted to. These are the different types of credentials you could put in, authentication types. But here's two just for demo purposes. Here's your ports. This explains some of these ports that are going to be tested. The reason you don't test every single port, every single vulnerability, is it's going to create a scan that just takes a long time and uses a considerable amount of resources. And a lot of that, when you do these ports that are non-typical ports or scanning hosts for every vulnerability when the host isn't even up, it's just wasted time. So you can see these. This is the one that typically runs with the full and fast. It has 5,836 ports it's going to check on each and every live host. This one has 11,300 some. This one has 65,000. So you can imagine this takes a lot longer than these other ones. You could create your own. You could create your own ports that you want. You could choose a range. So this is where you'd set up a configuration for your port list if you wanted to scan different ports. And here's your configurations. This is what I showed you earlier with the full and fast. That's what we're on. It uses the OpenBot scanner. That's the type of scanner it's using. It's using, it's looking at 58 different families of vulnerabilities. And this is the total number of basically vulnerabilities that it's looking for. 65,729. If you chose this one, this discovery, it's pulling those vulnerabilities from 14 different families. These are probably more based on host discovery, and it has 3,000. Here's a minimum set of MDTs required for a scan. You have an empty one where you can add vulnerabilities. This is just a host discovery to find hosts on the network. So if you wanted to create your own, you click right here, new scan. We can start with a with a minimum set of NVTs. Let's just do empty actually. So this is like it has nothing in it. So this right here, if I kick this, um, what one? Didn't I just create one called YouTube? So you have to, you might have to refresh to get it to populate down here. So here's our scan. It's not going to look for any vulnerabilities at this point. Now we could edit this. The more 
vulnerabilities you look for too, the more noise it creates on the network. And you might get, if you're trying to do the stealthy for an engagement and you've been hired to try to do it as an attacker would, if you do a whole bunch of vulnerabilities, it's going to create more noise and you'll get detected sooner potentially so if you know that you don't have certain things on here if you want to just check for brute force attacks you could check this right here this is the scanner it's saying that if you ever select youtube scan it's going to scan just for brute force attacks you might want to change this name to brute force scanner say you want to do ftp also you want to see if you can gain remote shell connections you can also edit these further so if we look at these, this is what it does. This is what the scanner is actually doing. So VNC brute force login. This is actually what it's doing when it's scanning for this. You want to see what it looks like. This is what it's doing. All the systems that you have to get scanned, if this is selected, it's going to try this on it. It's going to try admin, VNC, test, and password. You could add passwords there if you wanted to. I wouldn't edit these to too much of a degree. So what we've done see we created brute force we're going to scan for there's 14 of those this is a family this family is called brute force attacks we're going to scan all the brute force attacks so that's one family of brute force attacks and it contains 14 nbts and we did the ftp family that has 180 nbts and gain a shell remotely that has 105 so we're looking at 285 95 96 7 8 9 299 total nbts and three different families in this one. So let's save that, see if we're right. Three families, 299 MBTs. We could, like I said, get more granule and say in this brute force, say we know they don't have a SQL server in their network, we could skip this one. And we took that one out, that one MBT. Now that's just for this YouTube scan. Notice all these other ones didn't lose one. Those are different. This is just the settings for this YouTube scan. So now we have another scan called YouTube scan. So we have a target we created called YouTube target or something we have the port list that we can choose we added some credentials we have a scan configured this YouTube scan we're not gonna scan as much as the full and fast so now if we went to the scans and look our our scan we initiated earlier is 85 percent complete but let's say we wanted to create a new one new task we're gonna name this YouTube demo. Here's our target list. This is the YouTube demo. Remember there was in that target list that we created, there was 200 hosts. You could create a target here too if you wanted to. But remember that's going to do the 200 hosts that we created over here under the targets. We created a target called YouTube demo and it was 168.0 or 168.192.0.1 through 200 alerts this is if you had an alert thing that you set up we didn't go into that today schedule this is if you had a schedule you could create one here we're not going to have any alerts go off we're not going to we're going to manually come in and generate a report and look at it we're not going to have emails sent or anything today we'll go over that in a different video add the results to assets so when it finds assets it'll add them in here so you could add them later they're already in the system so if it finds a live host, you could pick it later. You could rescan those hosts. I leave this on yes as default. I leave this as yes for default. This quality of detection, I think this is. That helps reduce false positives, I believe. I don't really mess with that. I leave it where it's at. Alterable task. I really have no idea what this means. So oh, I've never I've left this at default. I've, I do not automatically delete the reports usually. This I all leave at default. The scanner is the OpenVAS default. Scan configuration. This is the scan that we set up. So the full and fast is going to do what I showed earlier. It was like, I think, 5,000 ports, right? 53 different families, vulnerability families, and 5,000 some vulnerabilities. If we chose this YouTube scan, it's only going to scan fan three families because we set that up as the YouTube scan is only going to scan three families and that 298 vulnerability. So it'll take a lot less time, but I'm not scanning for as much. Network source interface, I just leave this blank. Can detect it on its own. I, this is if you had intrusion detection, you had a couple different interfaces that you could go out and scan from. You might want to choose a different network source interface so that it doesn't get blocked. That's beyond the scope of this video. 
your order for your target hosts. You can do random reverse sequential. That means in this case it'd do dot one, dot two, dot three for the IPs. Sequential, random, it just would do like dot one, dot one hundred, dot one fifty three, and reverse would start at in this case, because our scanner is one through two hundred, it'd start at dot two hundred. Next one would be dot one ninety nine. The reason you might do this is because detection tools might be able to see you scanning and going from host to host and flag that traffic intrusion. So if you have problems and it seems like you're getting blocked, you might want to change this to random or reverse. I typically leave it at sequential. This is kind of dependent on your scanner, what you've set your VM up for, what your Kali is running on, your resources for your RAM. So this will scan up to 20 hosts and four different vulnerabilities per host at the same time. This all looks good to me. Let's save that. So this is just a scan. This is a task that's sitting here. It's not launched. I could start it right now. Also a good thing to note here is if you're running a scan, it's currently running. You can stop it and then resume later from where you left off. I wouldn't recommend running multiple scans at once. That can be intense on the resources and it will increase the amount of time it takes to do your scan and it might cause you to have hiccups in the system. So I would just wait and do a scan and then once that completes, kick off another scan. This one I'm not kicking off. You know what it's gonna do. It's gonna scan exactly the same as this local test that I just did except for it's only going to scan 200 hosts and it's going to only scan 298 vulnerabilities whereas this local test when we set it up it's scanning for 5,000 some vulnerabilities and all the hosts thanks for watching please consider liking and subscribing next time a look at the scan results how to generate a report so that you can have that as a deliverable so if you're doing a scan for a company or you want to start doing this as a business companies you can generate a deliverable report based on your scan results and have recommendations for that company and organization. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.